My father came from a one one room. He was in rural Saskatchewan, and so he came from a one room schoolhouse. And his teacher that he had for a number of years loved science and math. And so my father went on to be an engineer, and he really loved science and math as well. Who your good teachers are, you know, people would be able to say right away, oh, so and so and so and so and so and so. But they may not know right away why, right? They might just, mm -hmm. oh, well, everybody liked him or her. But what they don't realize if they really think about it is it's probably because that teacher made the effort to connect and were they were passionate about what they were teaching and so that rubbed off on them and they were excited about it too realized that my true teacher that I always turned to was my father so when I had difficulty I would always come home and he was the one who would bring it back to something that was relative to my life so if I was having difficulty in math he would say all right let's talk about a story pretend that you're water skiing and you're going a certain speed behind the boat and then you go and you cut across the wake and that you're accelerating so I was able to take that experience and apply it to my learning and that was how I learned as a child and that's how I made it over the different obstacles that I did, is that I had a tutor, my father, that was amazing. Looking back, I believe that I probably teach the way he taught me. And so when I went into school, and was I always knew that I wanted to be a teacher, I went straight into uh, the Faculty of Education at university. And that's where I started to actually question uh, what I wanted to be because the way that I was being taught to teach was against how I felt intuitively that I wanted to teach if that makes any sense and the more that I explored the different philosophies of education the more I connected with Rousseau, uh, Maria Montessori and some of her foundation Waldorf so again when we're looking at Arts Caliber Academy um, lots of times people will ask me what we are and we are all of those things and we but we are none of only one because we're it's very eclectic and I think that uh, through my education my formal education post-secondary uh, I, I really started to question because I went into education thinking that everybody was gonna think like I did. <laughs> and everybody was gonna teach and it was just gonna be an affirmation for me of why I've chosen this career. And that's not what happened. When I went into my first year of teaching, it was a really tough year. I had 37 students in my classroom. I had two special needs. Um, and I, I struggled because I wanted to connect with all my students. And I felt like I couldn't do that. There were too many of them. They had too many different needs. And I, you know, pulled out all of my tools and was trying to reach them all. What I did discover though was after the first year, I did reach them all. I built excellent connections with all of my students. And uh, my principal at the end of the first year asked me to take those students up to the next grade level, which for me meant that I would have to throw out all of those plans, which I typically do anyway, actually, because um, when you're working with different children, you need to use different ways to connect with them. But I went from teaching grade three to grade four. Same students, completely different curriculum that I need to, to learn and apply, and I had the summer to do it. When I finished my second year of teaching, I was really quite disillusioned of Again, it just was really haunting me as to the students that I wasn't able to connect with on a daily basis, the students that were struggling and how I could reach them. I knew what I needed to do, but I couldn't do it because I didn't have the time to do it. So I taught with the Edmonton Public School Board for five years and decided to take a break from teaching and go and do some professional development. So I did some movement, I did some music, workshops and I actually started to explore kinesiology because again I'm a very hands-on kinesthetic person and um, what was interesting is that even though I was doing I was sort of working in a different field I was always applying it to okay how could I teach this 
how could I how could I use this to teach and connect with children so even though I was taking a break from education I think I was still developing my philosophy and when I came out to British Columbia I didn't have a teaching job out here and I started teaching piano I started teaching fitness I started teaching personal training and then ended up being called back to it a personal experience of mine I started wa I watched a movie about a teacher that was very very passionate and I realized that I needed to go back to education because that's my true calling and I was offered a position at, with the Greater Victoria School District but I was also teaching at a high school level and what was really interesting about that is that I had all of the experience kindergarten to grade 8 and now I was teaching grade 8 to grade 12 so I was seeing what happens with those students that have missed that connection along the way and or have that connection and where they where they go so I decided to pursue my masters when I had an opportunity to do so and my thesis was because performing arts is very passionate I'm very passionate connected to it uh, when I was teaching at the high school level I was teaching in the arts as well as in leadership and career and personal planning and I really saw that when students had a hook uh, something that gave them the confidence it it sort of spilled off in other areas of their lives and I could go into many many stories of that and I'm still hearing stories of students that are now grown up and have children of their own and they're coming back and running into them and, and just you know hearing about how their experience in the arts gave them the the confidence to pursue wonderful careers for themselves and so I, I am very grateful for that experience because what it gave me was it gave me the broad spectrum when I had children of my own um, I can remember being having to go back to work full time my daughter was not quite a year and I remember holding her and being quite emotional because I realized in that moment that I needed to start walking my talk it was always a dream of mine to open my own school because I always thought differently I wanted to offer my children the best educational experience I could possibly offer them and I knew that to do that I needed to strike out on my own and um, begin truly solidifying my philosophy of what education was because I felt that I had something to offer that was different and may be something that other people were looking for. When I started, I started with the preschool and I had to go back to school myself to do a little bit of upgrading for the early childhood years, which I did. And I started the Arts Caliber Preschool when my oldest daughter was three and at first I had people uh, really questioning uh, why we have the structure, we don't have the centers, our spaces are very open to allow the creativity and allow for the different activities uh, so we aren't broken off into the different centers which is sort of a typical preschool and so in the beginning there were you know questions because it was very different than what most people were used to and now people really enjoy the experience um, children generally do very very well in the program and they build their confidence and also get the skills to prepare them for kindergarten when my oldest daughter again she's been my driving force uh, reached school age I didn't have the space to start arts caliber at the school level and to be a school at the minister for the Ministry of Education to be recognized as an independent school we needed to have 10 children and we didn't have 10 children so she went into the public school I know that everybody's experience is different uh, she was a very confident girl little girl and she had some difficulties and she was losing her self-confidence and she was losing her voice and as a parent what I was concerned about was that she would because we do adapt to our environment and I was aware and I was watching her try to adapt to her environment to sort of uh, make it work in a large class setting it wasn't working and she was feeling lost and so by the end of that year for me it was an affirmation that I needed to proceed with the school 
And so for the, the September of the following year, we had our school and we were very small. We started with five children. So that was a real kick for me to realize that I knew I, I really needed to create something different because we all, I think we want security, we want stability, I had that. And I realized that if I was really gonna walk my talk, I needed to step out and take a risk and develop something that I needed as a parent and I needed as an educator for my child. And there were probably other children out there that might benefit from it. What I wanted to offer was small class sizes where the teacher can truly connect and get to know the child. Because as an educator, it is our job to figure out what is needed to provide the best education for each child. And that's not possible, as I realize it's not possible, when you've got 35 children or even 25 children in a class. Because as a teacher, we end up teaching down the middle because you've got a curriculum that you need to deliver and so you actually end up teaching to the curriculum not to the individual child and the curriculum can be taught but it can be taught in such a way that the connections there for the student because they're interested if they're excited about what it is they're learning they're going to remember and they're going to be re remember not just for the however long the unit is but they will remember for years uh, years afterwards because they've made those connections and so that's when I really started to as I say solidify begin the foundations of what Arts Caliber is and what it stands for it began with my own experiences I always ask the question why which is when I was in school that's what I wanted the answer to then I could truly understand what it was that I was learning and in mathematics, when the teacher couldn't answer the why, because they're saying memorize a formula, and I always had, well, what if I forget the formula in a test? How can I figure it out? And if that, if they couldn't provide me with that answer, then I would go to my tutor father, who would then explain it to me that, yes, there's many different ways that you can come up with the answer. And, you know, use those tools and go from there. So when I'm developing Arts Caliber's philosophy, the why is in big capital letters in the center of everything. Why are we teaching this? Why is it important for the teacher and the student? And when you can answer both of those questions, then the learning can happen and the teaching can happen. And teaching is more facilitation. It's providing the opportunities for the children to explore what it is that they want to. As I was working through, you know, building my school, building the foundation, um, one of the other big pillars, I always say it's a big pillar, is the Leader in Me program. The, the students have been doing it now for two years and the confidence level of all of the students, they all feel like they have a voice they all feel important so it's not like the the kids that are older have more say in the school than the younger children um, we it's just how it's how we approach every situation um, lots of times people will ask me well what is your discipline policy we don't really have a discipline policy we have the leader in me the, the seven habits and that's how we deliver and that's the, the, the culture of the school. It's shifting the paradigm and therefore when there is a, a conflict that arises, we use those seven habits to work through it. So the, all of the, the children are empowered. It's not coming from the top down. We work together. And so in working through all of those different conflicts using the seven habits, it's always consistent all the students are involved and therefore we're continually creating a safe environment. When you have a safe environment in your school, the students will take risks. They will take risks academically, they will take risks socially, and most importantly they'll be creative because they, they realize that the possibilities are endless. And that's sort of the second piece of Arts Caliber Academy is the creativity. Uh, as we move into uh, more and more of a fast-paced society, our students 
we have no idea what they are going to be what what they're what we're preparing them for we can't possibly keep up with technology because when it gets on the market it's already becoming obsolete because something better is coming along so what do the students need to 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 be successful in their lives they need to be critical thinkers they need to be decision makers, problem solvers, and they need to be confident. They need to feel confident. They need to feel that if they have an idea and they've thought through that idea, that they can present that idea. They also, and one of the habits of the leader in me is to th um, uh, seek first to understand before being understood. And that's probably one of the hardest life skills that we all need to, to constantly be aware of. Um, but being a good listener and understanding where other people are coming from is an excellent skill to learn to be a team player. And I think that that's a really, really important skill. Uh, the Covey Institute is always uh, reaching out to the community and asking uh, future employers what it is that they're looking for. And those are the skills that they're looking for in their employees. And so to be able to start the, that skill base at a very early age and to foster it so that when they are graduating, they ha they've got it. It just becomes a part of who they are. It, it, um, it just makes really strong, confident individuals going into the workforce. All of our staff are trained in the leader in me, so they, they feel it, it's a part of their lives. It, they, they live it, they breathe it themselves because if they don't do that, then they can't possibly teach it. And so we've created this culture and we are continually creating this culture. The other piece is the mind up. And the mind up is just simply that, being mindful, teaching the children to be mindful, mindful in their learning, mindful in their social interactions, uh, mindful uh, recognizing what they need as individuals. So even, even simple in, in kindergarten, I'm hungry, I'm thirsty those types of things, uh, being aware of what it is that, w that they need as individuals. And so then we can meet those needs in, in, in Arts Caliber Academy. And um, the literacy is also extremely, literacy and numeracy, those are obviously very, very key points in all school programs. Um, at Arts Caliber, connecting literature to our lessons. Again, it, it provides an opportunity for that experiential hands-on learning, which is key. Uh, it's, it's quite a buzzword out there. Lots of people are using it, but we definitely, we definitely do that. Um, we are an arts-infused school, so we use arts as a vehicle to teach, and we do that in all subject areas. And teaching the children about arts and integrating it into everything that we do provides them with that rooted education. It's rooted in history, in uh, culture, I mean, social studies and science it, it, and, and all of the academic subjects, it, they, it goes back in time. We learn about where it started, where, where it all began, and it's always connected to society, which is always connected to art. It's connected to music, it's connected to the visual art, and they see that and they see the masters of those times what better mentor or role model than to learn about those people and to experience through doing their own art or activities around it to experience what maybe that person was experiencing when they created it um, i'll stop for a moment here one of my mentors and it came at a very key point when i was around the time as i said when I was, you know, questioning whether maybe, you know, maybe I'll go the safe route. Maybe I'll put my child into the public system and I'll just supplement and I, I can do that. And, you know, with that experience that I, uh, that I explained to you before, I realized, no, I need to step out. It was very scary for me. And many people will say, are you, were you, or still say, are you crazy? And I actually was my husband who shared with me uh, an amazing person. Uh, many of you may know of him, Sir Ken Robinson. If you don't know of him, I would highly recommend that you go on. He's got many, there's TED Talks. There's many, many things on the internet about him. And he's probably one of the main leaders of the, the change in, the shift in the paradigm of education. And I sat at a very key point in, in, in developing my own uh, curriculum and watched him 
listen to him basically talk what I was feeling inside. And that's when I realized that I'm not, I wasn't alone. I wasn't alone in my, in my feelings, my beliefs. Um, and that gave me the courage actually to, to forge ahead because, um, you know, what, what we're creating here at Arts Caliber is different. And I thank the parents that have joined us when we were very young and new. They believed in us and um, together we're creating this school and with every year it grows and it gets stronger and with every year for me is the affirmation that what we're doing is is just it's transforming and it's very exciting i often get is i know you should change the name sandra you shouldn't call it arts caliber academy because you know it means that you know just do you just do art all day Yes, we do a lot of art. The art is integrated into the, all of the lessons, as I said, but it's more than that. It's, it's, it's a vehicle that we use. It's a tool that we use, even it's not necessarily a vehicle, to teach the child. And how we teach that child depends on the child. It depends. We've got many tools. I've listed some of them. And um, another big part that ties into the leader in me is we want our children to feel confident in themselves to be tuned into the, who they are. So they look after themselves, they sharpen their saw is habit number seven for the, the uh, seven habits, but that they're being fit. They're, they're looking after their bodies. So they're fit for life. They're not just going out and playing sports, but they're actually learning how the body works and how to connect with it and to be fit. Um, our students do swimming lessons in the timetable, they do it for three terms out of, or sorry, two terms out of three. Um, we're starting a swim team. We do um, functional movement uh, in our phys ed classes. So it, again, it's it's going beyond teaching the skills of soccer, teaching the skills of baseball, of the team sports, which are really important. It's about teaching about physical movement and why there's that why again why are we learning about this why is it important because when you get older and you're not in school anymore you're still going to need to look after yourself so that you can be fit for yourself um, not necessarily a marathon runner though if that's what you want to do that's awesome but to be to recognize I I'm gonna go for a walk or I need to drink enough water that it just becomes part of Again, it's that holistic approach. It's looking at all sides of education. And in a time, especially in the early years, the time when those foundational skills are key because they set them up for life, then that also needs to be a key component. It could go on about um, the staggering statistics of, of children that are just not active anymore. Um, you know, technology plays a part in that. There's lots of opportunities to sit and watch programs and not get, get out and get active. And so, you know, that's another really big component of our school is the whole child, the physical child, the intellectual child, and the emotional child. It's the whole package. Well, the really, the real key, 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 key point in success for education is that you need to know the child in front of you. All aspects. Like it's, it's important to know your students. And so how we get to know our students is through the leader in me, through the holistic approach. Again, that's a buzzword right now, but it's, it's true. And our children coming into our schools everywhere are way more complex than they used to be because they're exposed to so much more. And in terms of technology, many children in kindergarten come in with the skills beyond kindergarten level more than they did before because they've got exposure to many wonderful educational programs that are available on the internet or the television programs. There's just more than there was before. And so we need to figure out where each child is at and where, where they want to go. Um, I also believe that each child comes in to this world with 
a desire, a skill, a talent. Um, we all have it, and it's sort of our job as as parents, as educators, as facilitators, as coaches, to discover that and help do whatever it takes to have that child or individual recognize that talent skill set in themselves and then to foster it and nurture and help them be the best that they can be and for many for many children they're very multi uh talented and their their abilities are are far it's not just one it's many and so we don't want to limit them we want to encourage them to strive to be the best that they can be in all the areas of their interest and you know when they get older then they will have lots of doors open for them uh, another question that i am asked is well how, how can you possibly take this this philosophy to grade 12 and my answer to that is how can i not because where will these children go from here we have given them the flexibility to truly explore who they are and see what they're capable of. And then if we shut that down at grade five, where will they go for six to 12? Or if we shut that down at grade eight, where will they go for nine to 12? So my commitment is to carry Arts Caliber Academy to grade 12. and. I truly don't know what the future will hold because the individuals that we are educating right now have far have far surpassed um, anything that that we I can't I'm, I'm struggling here we don't set limits and so by not setting limits the children just constantly exceed and they challenge themselves and that's what true education is is giving them the opportunities to explore, try, challenge, try again. So they're constantly pushing their own comfort zone. Out of the comfort zone is where the true learning comes. And so providing them with a safe environment to do that, so then we don't know what their, what their limit is because they haven't reached it. And you know, often the students, one question that I will ask the students is, well, what is it that you like about Arts Caliber Academy? And sometimes they can't give an answer. Oh, well, I like, I mean, they will say, well, I like that we have piano inside the timetable, or I like the swimming, or I like the leadership discussions and assemblies that we do every week. But more often they'll say, I don't know, I like the feeling. It feels really good. So when I hear that, I think, all right, I think what they're speaking to is that safety. They feel safe, they feel heard, and they feel supported to take risks in their education. And so the sky's the limit for them. And I think that that is preparing our individuals for the future because we don't know what the future holds. And so providing them with the tools to never give up, to follow your dream many people that have been hugely successful in their lives have believed in something and persevered and yes it may not be easy but keeping that goal in mind and keeping pushing striving um, persevering and knowing that there's people there that support you in that and encourage you i've had you know people that have come into our classroom as guest speakers or they'll come in and teach a little segment on science or outdoor education or history and they will often say to me afterwards wow you can really see the individual child for me that's a compliment it's an affirmation that we're moving in the right direction it's not like oh that's a neat class it's like whoa those are really neat individual people and I'm excited to see where their future, like I'm excited to hear those stories, to see where they're going with their dreams, with their ambitions, um, because they're very capable. We're all capable. And if we have the support of um, those around us, then we can truly achieve our dreams. I'm still working on mine. <laughs>